Hi everybody and welcome to Fab Tax. I'm Rosemary and in today's video I have a compilation of 25 boho beach coastal and nautical Dollar Tree DIYs. The first five will be new DIYs followed by 20 previously published projects now grouped into one convenient video which has been time stamped so you can skip ahead as needed. Details on the timestamps can be found in the description box below. Let's go ahead and jump right in. For the first DIY, I'm going to use one of these globe vases from the Dollar Tree. Now this is the larger one. They do have a smaller one, but I'll be using the larger one. And then also one of these recycled cans. I did use it for paint previously, but I'm using it for the DIY now. And I'm gonna just paint that and then I'll glue the two pieces together with some E6000 glue. Then I'm going to cut pieces from this Dollar Tree Willow wreath. And I'll just cut them uh, probably, you know, I'm doing different sizes, so I'll do some that are maybe about four inches, three inches, because the variation is going to give some um, definition, some you know, natural look to the um, piece. And then I'm going to just hot glue them all onto the side of the can. And you can see where those different variations in height give it some nice appeal. And then I did notice that the flatter branches do work better. So I did proceed with doing those and I just kind of glued it on the curved part and left the flatter part um, up to be shown on the outside. And then you can see what it looks like when it's all finished. And then I just took some of the Dollar Tree twine and wrapped it around a few times and then hot glued the ends. And then here you can see what it looks like when it was all finished. Next, I took some rocks that I got from the Dollar Tree, as well as this little succulent plant, also from the Dollar Tree, and I just filled my vase with some of the rocks, and then placed the little succulent inside. And then here is the finished project, a cute little boho beach succulent terrarium. For the next DIY, I'm going to be making some of my own driftwood. And so all I did for this is I just found some branches that were weathered. So these are the kind of branches that are like either in a marshy location or maybe they're under, you know, they were under leaves and snow all winter. And so these are the ones that have, you know, seen some seen some weather conditions and as a result, their bark has uh, either been removed or is flaking off. And um, sometimes you can see where like that, the uh, bark will just kind of peel off and then sometimes you kind of get to help it along with, you know, some pliers or something like that. But you basically want to get the bark off um, or, you know, if it already has the bark off, uh, those are good candidates as well. And then you just take um, a container, add some water and maybe about like a half a cup of bleach. And then you just let those soak overnight in the container. Next day, you can take those out um, flip them around if you want uh, to get the other side and then take them out and just lay them in the sun to dry. And then here's the result. You get these great pieces of bleached out wood and they uh, look a lot like driftwood and you are able to cut them pretty easily and uh, use them in all types of projects. But for this one, we're going to just uh, put cut them into small strips so that I can apply them here to the sides of this Dollar Tree votive. Now this is similar to something that I actually saw online so I'm going to be following that design and so I'm going to add some of my multi-purpose, it's not multi-purpose, multi-surface, that's the right word, multi-surface glue to the, it's that tight bond glue that I talked about earlier. I'm going to add that in kind of dashes uh, along each edge of the corner there of this votive and then I'm going to add some hot glue in between those dashes. Again, that is just to have the uh, immediate hold of the hot glue and then the more permanent hold of the tight bond glue. Uh, hold that place while that tight bond glue sets up. And then I'm just going to check that it does sit flat, that I don't have anything creating an uneven uh, bottom there. So I want it to be able to sit flat when it's all done. And then I'm going to just repeat this process on all of the four corners. And then also notice that I'm kind of just... Um, using uneven pieces. I'm going for a more like au naturel look. I think the uh, uh, other piece that I'm kind of trying to mimic is a little bit more refined, but I kind of like this uh, more, you know, natural look. So I'm going to just go ahead and break the pieces into, you know, different shapes and they're not real even. And I kind of just like that look. And then once I have all four corners done, I'm going to go back and just add some pieces to the tops and bottoms of the sides 
and uh, the way the inspiration piece is, is, is like this where the, um, you know, the driftwood is just along the sides and then you have the glass in the middle so that you can see your votive candle. And then for any glue that is on the sides of the glass, I'm going to use one of these razors that you can get at Dollar Tree. These are great little tools. Um, just note that you have to take the razor and flip it to the other side, which is what I just did. And then it's really great for getting a glue uh, or other adhesives off of uh, the glass and you just scrape it up like that and it's great. And then here's the finished project, a little boho beach driftwood boat. For the next DIY, I'm using this 1.25 liter Coke bottle, a small four ounce deli container, and then this large pickle jar. So the first thing I did was just remove the label. And then once that was taken off, I could go ahead and cut just the top of the bottle off. So I'm using a utility knife and I'm just going along that bottom ridge and removing the top piece. Then I took some painter's tape and I just cut some small pieces and then place those at the bottom of the cutoff. And I'm doing this in every other section. You can see there where there's little indentations creating um, different sections. There's 10 sections all together on this bottle at the top of the bottle. So what I wanna do is just place those pieces of tape there at the bottom, and then I'm going to place another piece of tape at the top of those ridges. So if you can see that the ridges kind of end there at the top before they go to the top of the bottle, and I'm going to just add another piece of tape there at the top because I want to just create a, a mark for myself to cut between when I'm going to cut out the holes for the potpourri bottle. And so I want to place that uh, bottle down on my work surface and use my utility knife to again cut right down in that section where the indentation is. And I want to cut from the bottom of the top piece of tape to the top of the bottom piece of tape. And I um, don't want to hold it like this where I'm showing you there. I want to make sure that it's down on the table. We don't need any more hospital visits, right? We want to keep the hospitals. We want to stay home and stay safe. So uh, make sure that that's down on the bottom when you're cutting those uh, slits. And then um, that enables you to just put your scissors in uh, the slits and be able to cut off the top and bottom pieces so that you can create those nice little holes there for your potpourri uh, jar lid. And I'm doing that in every other section. To create some ornamentation for the top, I'm going to just use this little uh, golf ball. It's a little Dollar Tree golf ball that I have. And I'm going to add that with some E6000 glue in the middle and then some hot glue around that. Uh, the hot glue will give it an instant hold while the E6000 will give it a more permanent hold. And you can use whatever you have on hand, a marble, a ping pong ball, or even a smaller bottle cap would also work well here. Then I'm going to take my small plastic container. I think this had grated cheese in it at one time. And then I'm going to just add some E6000 glue there to the top of uh, that lid. So this is on the top of the lid um, that I'm placing this. And then also some hot glue also to the top in between. And then I'm going to just put those two pieces together, hold them in place until that hot glue is set. And then I'm going to take both my topper and my base and paint them with three coats of white chalk paint. And then after my pieces are painted, I'm going to go ahead and add some Distress Ink. So there you can see what they look like after three coats of the chalk paint. And now I'm just taking a makeup sponge and some black paint that I've pretty much dabbed the um, dab the makeup sponge into the black paint and then quickly remove the black paint so that I'm just getting a very teeny 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 bit of the um, black paint on this sponge and then I'm just going on to all the edges so the edges on the interior of the little um, windows there for the potpourri at the top and then also uh, around the top of the cap and um, on the ball so just kind of you know, just kind of wisping it over the edges of the different um, elements of this lid. So again, you know, on the edges, on the edge of the bottom, around the ball, and also on the edges of the cap itself. And then this just gives it, gives it a nice distressed look. And then maybe even just a little bit of um, brushing it a little bit over the tops of the sides of the um, holder. And you can do this as much or as little as you prefer. It's a personal choice. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process on the base, again, going along the edges of the, uh, of the base, uh, where the little ridges are on the bottom, and then also along the top. And then once the distressing is completed, I'm going to go ahead with my large pickle jar and take some E6000 glue and glue the jar to the base. Next, I'm going to take some of my Dollar Tree sand and I'm just going to fill about the bottom quarter of the jar up with the sand. And then I'm going to take a variety of different Dollar Tree items. Um, I have some of the Dollar Tree rocks as well as some of my homemade driftwood, this little Dollar Tree succulent, some Dollar Tree seashells, and I'm going to just arrange them inside the jar and make a nice little beach-like terrarium display. Then once it's how I want it to be, I'm just going to go ahead with my little lid and top it off. And then here is the finished project, a little boho beach jar terrarium. For the next DIY, I'm going to be using this little jar, which came with those little purple flowers there. You can see that second one already still has the flowers in them. And I just pulled the flowers out of the top hole, and now I'm going to just wrap the neck of the small vase with some Dollar Tree twine. Then I'm gonna take a wood skewer and cut off about a two inch piece, and then take a seashell and hot glue that two inch piece of skewer to the back of the seashell. And then I'm going to stick the skewer into the top of the jar, and that'll create a cute little beach boho jar, perfect for a tear tray or any place you want to add a little coastal accent. I just love this next DIY. It uses one of these Dollar Tree square signs. Now I just pop that little seashell off on the side. I'll use that for another project. And I'll just flip it over. I'm going to use the back and then I'm going to cover it with a piece of this scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. And I'll also be using these adorable flip flops from the Dollar Tree. First, I want to cut my paper down to size by just making a template. I just laid the sign down on the piece of paper and then I'm going to just draw around it with a pencil to mark where I need to cut the paper. Next, I remove the little twine hook and just set that aside because I do want to use that again once I'm finished with my project. Now I'm going to coat the back with a thin, even layer of some Mod Podge. Now here you can see where I've laid it on pretty thick. And I'm doing that because I want to make sure I have enough of the Mod Podge on the surface. But then what I'm doing here is I'm going back and I'm removing a lot of that, or at least making sure that it's nice and evenly distributed. And then it's ready to place the paper on, which I actually lost the footage of. Uh, but once your paper is on, you can go back with a gift card or credit card and just further seal it down by going across the uh, surface like I am there, trying to make sure that there are no air bubbles or gapping or anything like that. Then I will set aside to dry and start working on my flip-flops. So for my flip-flops, I'm going to remove the yellow top part of the flip-flop. And you can do this, they just kind of pull right out of those little holes. And then to change the texture a little bit of the flip-flop to make it look less like an actual flip-flop and more like maybe, uh, you know, an applique that you would use on a sign, I'm going to just do a couple of coats of Mod Podge on top. And this will just give it a different look than just having that kind of rubber look to it that is just you know rubber from the flip-flop it'll make it look a little bit more finished and then here they are after two coats of the Mod Podge and you might be able to tell there on the camera I'm not sure but it does give a different finish to the flip-flop then I'm going to take some of this white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree it comes already with that black tape on the edge and I'm going to just uh, add some hot glue to that one hole there on the side and then take that black black taped edge of the nautical rope and stick it right into that hole. And then I'll bring that cord up to the middle hole of the flip-flop and kind of hold it in place to measure out where I need to cut off the piece. And at that spot, I'm going to take some black tape of my own and wrap it around the rope at that point. Then I'm going to take some scissors. I'm gonna cut that right in half and then that'll create another small black piece for me to use to put it into the hole. And I'll do it the same way with the hot glue and then just push that taped edge into the hole. Now you may need to use um, some scissors to get the um, deep down into the hole. So just go ahead and do that if you need to. 
and then I'm going to just bring that middle section back up to the middle hole and again just use some hot glue to glue that in place. And then I'll just go back and make sure that the rope is not hiding any of my letters and just maybe add some uh, dabs of hot glue uh, to hold the rope in place and away from the letters. And then I'm going to go back with some of these aster flowers that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to just remove one of the flowers and then just hot glue it right in place at the top of the flip-flop. And then I'll do the same thing for the other side. Before adding the flip-flops to the sign, first I have already done a top coat of the Mod Podge. Um, and then I'm going back and just poking through those holes through the paper. And now I'm going to add back my... Uh, hanger to the sign and this is the same hanger that I had at the beginning that I removed to put the paper on and you can paint that back if you choose I'm gonna just leave mine the way it is since it'll be hanging on the wall and then you can just go on and arrange your flip-flops in the way that you want on the board and then just glue them down I'm going to be using my favorite tight bond quick and thick glue to apply my flip-flops but you could use whichever glue you like, E6000. I believe uh, hot glue would probably work here as well. And then here's the finished project, a little life is better in flip-flops beach sign. Next is the first of the previously published DIYs. The first series is the Coastal Farmhouse in Blue and White, originally published on June 5th of 2020. For the first DIY, I'm going to use four of the Dollar Tree shadow boxes. Now I can only get three of the same kind, but um, as long as they are the same size, you could just, since I'm going to be painting them, it was fine. I could just go ahead and use the fourth one that was a different type. And now I'm also going to use some of these wood cutouts from the Dollar Tree. This uh, one pack as well as uh, the shell from this other pack. This one had seahorses and a little mermaid at the top. Uh, but I'm going to just be using the seashell from that package of wood cutouts. Then I'm going to use some of this Serene Americana Decor paint that I purchased at Michael's. Um, for this video, I will be doing everything in that color of blue. Now in the future video, I'm going to be using this French teal. These are really interchangeable. Um, they will both give that great coastal farmhouse look, but um, I'm going to do everything in this Serene blue uh, for this video and then do the teal in the future video. But again, if teal is your preference you can certainly do that with these uh, DIYs in this video it would work just as well and vice versa for the teal video you'll be able to use this uh, more muted blue shade for those to begin I just wanted to pop off the little paw print here in this one uh, and in this case I was able to pop that off and the little wood uh, riser stayed in place now if you see here the next one I did, the riser came off and then I couldn't get it off of the little paw. And then the same thing happened for the gather uh, little shadow box. And so I'm going to be using these wood craft cubes from Dollar Tree in order to create the risers for those two shadow boxes. And then for the two shadow boxes that did have the riser uh, stay on the box, I will just go ahead and use those. But for those other two, I will be using the wood cubes in order to create a riser for my... And then I'm going to paint the shadow boxes with some white chalk paint. And then the little wood cutouts, I'm going to paint with that serene blue paint. And now here you can see where everything has been painted. And I attached uh, the little wood cube risers. I also had to add a couple pieces of the... Uh, broken up pieces of these little wood cutouts in order to make them equally as high as the little cubes. So that's why the other side has a little misshapen riser there on the side. But I'm just going to go ahead and add some wood glue to the surface of the riser and then attach the little wood cutouts that have been painted in that serene blue. And you can just see how nicely the blue contrasts with the white. It's just a simple blue and white a little motif but it just makes such a great impact and such a nice clean nautical coastal farmhouse look and then here we see the finished project quick and easy and a great addition to any coastal farmhouse decor for the next DIY I'm going to be using this ball and small globe vase from the Dollar Tree now that is the smaller globe vase there is a larger one so you want to get the smaller one and then some white paint and I will be making a little sea urchin vase slash candle hole. First I'm going to take the ball on the underside and then count down three rows from I guess you can call it its little belly button there 
and uh, just puncture the ball in and then I'm going to cut uh, to the outside of that third row of little spikes that come out of this porcupine type ball. And then I'm going to just remove that top portion and then go back to that uh, back side of the ball and cut straight down to the middle of the ball, creating that type of shape where I'm going to now put the vase inside. And so I'm basically going to just, and again, this is that smaller vase. There is a larger one, but it's not going to fit in this ball. You need to have the smaller globe vase from the Dollar Tree. And then I just basically place the vase inside the little um, casing now of what used to be the ball. And I'm just showing you here from a different angle how I kind of just slide it in and then wrap the um, ball around the vase. And then when it comes to the back of the vase, all I'm doing is I'm laying down flat one side of the ball. And then I'll just take the other side and lay it uh, right on top. Then I just want to go around to the front of the ball and make sure I don't have any gapping and that the ball is laying flat on the surface of the vase. Next, I applied the paint using a flat stencil type foam brush. And I just applied the paint to the base. I wanted to keep the little spokes free of any paint. I wanted those to remain blue. And I did switch to chalk paint because the craft paint was a little bit too shiny. And I got any paint off that got on any of the spokes. And then I just did that for the entirety of the ball. And then I just went back and made sure that I didn't have any spaces or any little gaps. And then this was what the finished project looked like. A cute little blue and white sea urchin. And I wanted to show you as well how cool it looks when it's lit up. And you can see how the light shines right through those blue pieces. It kind of looks like a light bright sea urchin or one of those Christmas trees that have the lights that come out of the tree. For the next DIY, I'm going to use one of these Dollar Tree wood frames with a little heart cut out and a little space there on the side that you can write something down. And then I'm going to take this Google Maps image, which happens to be a picture of the very tip of New Jersey. This is uh, Cape May, New Jersey. And you can see how the image is kind of muted out. I didn't want that bright kind of colors that normally come with the Google Map. So what I did was I took a screenshot of the image and then I put it into PowerPoint in this case and um, went into picture format and then into the saturation level and changed it from 100% to 40%. And then you can see where it gave me that nice muted shade. And you can see the difference between the two. Here's the bright one and then the nice and muted, more farmhouse look. Also, I just want to point out that where that little uh, marker is, that is actually Cold Spring, New Jersey, which is about five miles from the coast. And um, that's where my grandfather had a small farm and farmhouse. And I had the great pleasure and joy of spending much of my childhood in an actual coastal farmhouse. For the frame, I wanted to just give it a nice beachy weathered look. So I don't, I'm going to just take the natural wood and I'm going to just use some white chalk paint that I'm going to just dry brush onto the natural surface of the wood. So I just want to give the wood a nice light coating and all I want to do is give it that bleached out weathered look. And you can just easily achieve that by dry brushing the white paint onto the natural wood surface. Now, one thing I did want to mention about my grandfather's farmhouse, which is kind of funny to me, is, you know, there, there wasn't absolutely plenty of mason jars and uh, enamelware and rusty items. But it's kind of funny as I'm doing this, what I'm thinking about is none of that was used for decoration. None of that was used for decor. It all had functional uses. Now, of course, um, my grandmother had passed away some time before I think he moved his farm from Goshen to Cold Spring. And so um, I'm sure she would have had some nice feminine touches along the way. But... But with Pop Pop, those mason jars were actually used for canning. And that 1930s enamelware was actually from the 1930s. And all those dings and scrapes were actually from years of use. He probably would have gotten such a kick out of the idea that we are now actually dinging and scuffing things up on purpose. And that we're using it as decor nonetheless. So I'm sure he would have gotten quite a kick out of that one. But... I love it. I think it's beautiful. And 
you know, it kind of does remind me of him, and especially doing this particular coastal farmhouse, it's, um, you know, it's definitely a walk down memory lane. While the paint was drying, I went and took the little heart cut out from the frame, and I'm going to just place it over my map image and then trace around it so that I can cut the map out according in that uh, shape so that it'll fit in the frame. Now, I was very blessed to have many Jersey Shore town experiences, from Wildwood across the bridge from Cape May with its fantastic boardwalk and amusement piers, Sea Isle, where I read it, Shore Houses with Friends, and that's where I met my husband, Ocean City, also with an amazing boardwalk and amusement piers, and then the wonderful, beautiful Brigantine, where I spent summers with my own children before moving to Texas. But my first shore love, my dad's hometown, where I spent most of my summers, and where much of my family still lives, is the gorgeous Cape May. So when I was doing this project and I was deciding which of my many shore loves I was going to put in this heart-shaped frame, it of course had to be my very first love, Cape May. And so now here along the side, I'm just going to uh, put the words Cape May. I'm going to measure up from the bottom about two and a half inches and then draw a line straight across. That's where the cape is going to go. And I was going to uh, print this off of my computer as I normally do, but I had just earlier today picked up some of these screen print st um, stencils from Michael's. They were on clearance. Michael's is having a wonderful clearance sale if you haven't checked it out yet. And um, so picked these up for about, I think they were $2.50 from originally $9 or $10. So uh, I was itching to try these out, so I'm going to go ahead and use these to write the uh, to stencil the word Kate May. And then, in order to help the drying process, I just pulled out my hair dryer, tried to help that C to dry a little bit before I could proceed to my next letters. And then I'm just making sure that I'm lining the bottom of the stencil up with that. Uh, line that I had drawn and then I'm just checking to make sure that my spacing is right between the letters. And then I'm going to just take my stencil foam brush. Now I did get this one at Michael's but they do sell them at the Dollar Tree as well. And then I'm going to just take out any uh, excess paint and then just pounce uh, straight down onto the stencil making sure to get the paint into all the little nooks and crannies. And then I just continued with the stenciling. Now, of course, you don't have to put the name of the shore town or the location. You can put just, I've seen just the longitude and the latitude. You can do something like my happy place or our happy place um, or shore love or my beach love, something like that. Then to remove the line, I just took a damp cloth and just rubbed along this, uh, the line to remove it. Now, if um, you're having a little difficulty getting it off or it's still leaving a mark, you can always go back with some paint. But I was able to get that um, line off pretty easily just with a damp cloth. And then to do the second word, May, I just measured up one inch from the bottom and again created a line to go across that I can line my stencils up to evenly put the letters on and then just proceed it to stencil on my second word, May. Then here's the finished project, and I think that those stencils gave just the right effect, giving the lettering that aged, weathered look. For the next DIY, I'm going to use this small wooden box and this whisk, both from the Dollar Tree. First, I'm going to take some wire cutters, and I'm going to just snip the tops of the whisk. So everywhere where the whisk wraps around, I'm just going to clip the top so that all of the spokes now stick straight out. And then I'm going to just go ahead and separate them all out because what I want to do is transform this whisk into a coral reef. And I'm going to do that by applying some hot glue to the cut spokes of the whisk. Now this method of using hot glue to create coral trees has been floating around the internet for many years now. And typically what they do is create the tree branches, trunk, and base from wire and then use the glue to create the bumpy surface. But what I want to do here is hack some Dollar Tree items to cut out a few steps and get that same effect. And so by just snipping the top of the whisk, we're able to get the base and the branches ready to go so we can start applying the glue. And so what I'm doing is I'm putting the glue on um, all around the branches. So I do it to the inside, I do it to the outside. You get, of course, lots of those uh, strings, lots of those hot glue strings. 
but you just continue to go all the way around the entire whisk on each of the spokes and then once I have um, all of the spokes coated on both sides I did go back and make them even thicker right I wanted to create even more um, of the bumpy surface so I went back again and did a second coat of the glue on top and this does use quite a few glue sticks I probably went through about five or six of the small glue sticks before I got the bumpiness the bumpy texture to where I wanted it to be now after I got the glue to my desired level of thickness I did go and give it a base coat of white paint now I use spray paint but you can also use brush paint and then for the base, what I did was I took the small wooden box and I removed the drawer and then placed a piece of floral foam into the drawer and then replaced the drawer. Then I uh, wanted to paint the box. I'm going to use that same weathered white uh, finish that I used on the previous DIY and just dry brush some white chalk paint all over the surface of the small wood box. And then once the paint was dry, all I needed to do was take the handle of my whisk and insert it right into the box, right into the floral foam inside the drawer. And then to give the coral some texture, I'm going to use some Dollar Tree spackle. It's about three tablespoons, and I'm going to add one tablespoon of the chalk paint to that. I'm going to mix it up uh, nice and smooth and then just apply it to all of the branches and all of the coral getting it into all those little nooks and crannies and that just creates a really nice coral like finish to uh, the tree and then once I'm get I've gotten all those branches painted and nice and coated I'm going to go back and make sure I get the the gap at the bottom and so to do that I'm going to take my glue gun and just fill that in with some hot glue and then I'm also going to go back to the trunk part and I'm going to add some glue globs there uh, to create that bumpy surface. And then once that glue is dry, I'll just go back with my spackle paint and paint a fresh coat on top. And then here's the finished project, a cute little coral type tree on a stand. For the next DIY, I'm going to be using one of these Dollar Tree Captain's Wheel wood frames as well as a captain's wheel wind chime, and then another one of those small boxes and a wood dowel. And then I'm going to paint everything with the serene blue chalk paint. In addition to painting the pieces with the blue paint, I also added some floral foam to the drawer of the little box that I'm just going to put right back in. Then I'm going to take the wood backing to the frame and flip the picture inset over to the blank side, and then just reattach the backing to the frame. Then I'm going to take my small captain's wheel and place it right on top of the larger one so that the spokes of the smaller one are going in between the spokes of the larger one. Then I'm going to use some wood glue to glue the two pieces together. And then I took these Dollar Tree wood letters that I also painted in the serene blue and I did north, south, east, and west and then I glued it to the wheel spokes with north to the top and then south to the bottom then east to the right and west to the left. And then I took some of this Dollar Tree caulk to fill in the holes on the smaller wheel. And then for a decorative accent, I just took one of these Dollar Tree seashells and attached that with some glue to the center of my now compass wheel. To attach the dowel to the back, I just used some wood glue as well as some hot glue because I wanted to, oh, went up too far there, needed to come back but um, just wanted to use some both wood glue and some hot glue because this way I can have the uh, hot glue hold the dowel in place while the wood glue takes more time to set up. And then to give the compass a weathered look, I decided to dry brush some white chalk paint over the surface of the base and the compass, paying special attention to the edges and the other spots that would have gotten naturally worn over time. And then once I was happy with the amount of weathering, I just took the dowel and I just inserted it right into the foam inside the box. Then to fill the gap I am going to use the caulk again and I'm just going to put it right inside the little hole and all the way around the bottom of the pole. And then once that caulk is dry I will go back and paint it with the blue paint. And then here is the finished piece, a fun nautical compass in that beautiful coastal farmhouse blue. For the last DIY, I'm going to use two of these ceramic seashells from the Dollar Tree, as well as two more of the small wooden boxes. 
and then two of these wood arrows, all these from the Dollar Tree, and then also the stones from the Dollar Tree. Now, uh, I would have had, I do have wood slats from Walmart that would have been perfect here, um, but I did want to use all Dollar Tree, so in order to get the just a little wood slat here, I am going to have to cut this uh, off with my saw, so I'm going to take those in the back and do that. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get these little drawers of the wood boxes taped up with some duct tape. Just want to tape over the uh, hole in the front. And then I'm going to add some stones, some of these Dollar Tree stones to the drawer uh, because these are going to be book ends and I need them to have some weight. So I um, also want to glue the drawer into the wood box uh, because when I, I don't want when I move the um, bookends, I don't want the stones to fall out. So I'm going to go ahead and just glue the drawer into the box. Then I'm going to take my wood slat. So now I've cut that uh, arrow down to a seven and a half inch wood slat. I'm going to use some wood glue as well as some hot glue to attach the wood slat to the side of the box. Then I'm going to paint the wood in the same technique I've been using all along, just uh, on the natural wood. I'm going to take a dry brush of the white chalk paint and just a lightly brush over the natural wood. And this is going to just give that great weathered beach look. Next, I'm going to take my little ceramic seashell and just glue it right to the top. And then that's it. And then I'll just repeat the process for the other side. And now those are good to go for any of your books, but I'm going to go ahead and create some decorative books. And I'm going to just get these Dollar Tree books. I'm going to paint them in the serene blue, and then I'm going to add a stencil. And I chose my stencil to say sea, sand, and sun. And so I'm going to just use my Dollar Tree stencil to go back and stencil those words on the ends of the books. And here's the finished project. You can use the bookends for your regular books or add the painted books to create a decorative piece. Next up is a selection of neutral beach and boho decor items previously published on June 13th, 2020. First, I'm going to make a macrame-ish fish. And so to do that, I'm going to use one of these brightly colored fish from the Dollar Tree as well as a Dollar Tree mop head. Now I've already removed the pole from the mop. Uh, and then for the fish, I just want the skeleton part. So I'm going to remove all of this colorful garland and you can just do that by just kind of pulling it off. It comes right off. It just has, it's um, just held on by those little nubs along the skeleton. And then I'm going to go and take the uh, top plastic part off of the mop head. And now I stopped it here because I want to show you that I want to use the top of that in the next DIY. So uh, I'm going to put that aside, but I'm going to be using that shortly. Uh, for the next DIY and now what I'm going to do here is just start by adding some hot glue to the fish skeleton. You can start in any location, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to just start wrapping the mop threads around the skeleton frame. And so I got so far and I realized those little nubby parts that hold the garland on really um, aren't going to work out too well. So I went back and I removed all those, just took them off with a wire cutter. They also come off with a scissor, so either or. But just get those all off because they kind of do stick out and don't really help with the wrapping process. But um, I started it with some glue and then I'm going to wrap a little bit and then I just um, add some glue and then I wrap a little um, just trying to hold it in place. But it doesn't really matter which way you go on the skeleton. You can kind of just um, keep going until you get to the end of the strand. And then I just add some glue uh, to the uh, end of the strand and then start the next strand in that same kind of splotch of glue and then just continue to wrap the strand around. And then just keep going, adding a little glue as you go. And like I said, just keep going in whichever directions uh, you want to go. Uh, once you get into these little spots, I wanted to show you here though, that you do want to go around all of the skeleton. So even in these little tight spots, you want to get um, both sides of that separately. So kind of go on the bottom uh, where the body of the fish is and then up again where the fin is separately because you want to have that definition there on the fish. And then again, just where it stops, just add the new strand and continue to go all the way through until you've wrapped the entire skeleton. 
Now, um, afterward, I did go back and there were little fuzzies and little strands that I did cut off and clean up. But um, pretty much after you've wrapped the fish, and that's the project. That's all there is to it. And this is the kind of project that would look great if you did two or three um, and just put them up as a nice wall hanging, uh, like a little school of fish. And then here is a look of our macrame-ish fish hanging on the wall. Okay, for the next DIY, I'm going to use two of the shadow boxes. These have a light colored uh, edge on it. And then also four of these little craft cubes from the Dollar Tree, some Dollar Tree dowels, some Dollar Tree push pins, and then also a can of dog food. And then there is the little top to our mop that is saved from the previous project. Now I do have to clip the little uh, prongs that stick out from the bottom because I do want this mop head to lay flat on the can. So I did have to clip those out. And then I'm just gonna remove the backs to the little shadow boxes. I'm gonna leave the little inserts in place uh, because I do want the candle eventually to sit on that um, little raised platform. And then I'm gonna just glue on the little cubes to create feet for the bottom of the lantern. Now the top is going to be without any uh, little feet because it'll be the top. And I'm going to just paint both the top and the bottom on the insides with a um, flat coating of the white paint. And then I'm going to do a dry brush to the sides and what will now be the top of the lantern um, on the exterior parts of the top of the lantern. So dry brushing on the uh, top and sides and then on the inside, a nice white coat to cover the uh, jungle print that was on this particular frame or shadow box. And then now the same thing with the base of the lantern. I'm going to just paint the bottom with a nice coat of white paint to cover that jungle print and then do some dry brushing along the sides as well as the little feet of the base of the lamp. In order to paint the push pins, I just put them in a spare piece of floral foam that I had on hand. And then I'm going to paint them with this copper spray paint but um, I also could have done it with the, the uh, brush paint. It's just the spray, spray paint would be easier and quicker. So I just went ahead with that, uh, but the other would work as well. And then I just took the base and um, I was trying to do it by inches, but it just wasn't lining up too well. Uh, the centimeter side was easier to get. I wanna make three marks on it, three equidistant marks on the base. So I went in at the halfway mark at seven centimeters and then also at three and a half centimeters and then 10 and a half centimeters. So it's three and a half, seven and 10 and a half. And then I'm going to just apply my push pins right in the middle of the side there, but at that three and a half, seven and uh, 10 and a half um, point. So I'm just kind of placing them in there with my fingers, but it is a really hard surface on the side of this um, little shadow box. So I did have to go back. Actually, I didn't even, and when I was too lazy, I didn't want to go get my hammer. So I'm like, ah, I'll just use the side of this um, pliers and just use that to bang them in. So it worked just fine. And um, I'm just going to do that all the way around and again, all in those three same spots. Then um, I'm going to just take my painted can. So now I've painted the uh, can and the top of the mop head with uh, some white chalk paint. And then I'm just using some E6000 glue to attach the can first and then the mop head on top of the can to create a little lantern topper. And then I'm going to just let that glue set up. But once the glue is dry, I'm going to go ahead and add the thumbtacks, the little push pin tacks again to the side of the top of the lantern. And so again, coming in at those same marks, seven centimeters, three and a half centimeters and 10 and a half centimeters. And then I will apply the push pins uh, at those marks just the same way, kind of pushing them in at first and then banging them in with the side of my pliers. And I will again do that on all four sides. And then for the risers on the lantern, I wanted to use some dowels and I wanted to wrap those in uh, some cord. And I was going to originally just use the twine from the Dollar Tree and I really didn't like the way those came out so well. So um, I happened to have purchased this huge, look at how ginormous this roll is, from Joann's. And I actually even thought it was in the wrong location because it was only $5.88 the normal price for 
um, this huge roll. And here it does turn out that was the price. And it, with the coupon, it only came out to like $3.45. So it was absolutely major bargain. And um, all I'm doing with the jute cord is I just uh, glued the bottom and then began winding the jute cord around the dowel and um, then just added a little more glue to the dowel itself and continue to wrap the jute all the way up the side of the dowel. This just gives it a little bit of some texture and a nice and nautical look. And after I've wrapped all four dowels, I'm just going to take some E6000 glue and put it there on the inside corner of the base. I'll put a dab to the top, a dab to the bottom, and then a little dab of hot glue in between those two. And then I'll just take my dowel and I'll hold it in place until the hot glue sets. And then the hot glue will keep it in place so that the E6000 can set. And then I'll repeat that for all four of the dowels. Next, I wanted to add a little more character to the lid of the lantern. And so I'm going to just take some more of that Joann's jute cord and I'm just going to add a little hot glue to the one side. Then I'm going to just begin to wrap the can portion of the lid with the jute cord. And um, I started off with some hot glue, but if you follow my channel, you know hot glue and I are not friends, not friends at all. So uh, as wherever I can, we can uh, use this tight bond glue. I found this stuff, I think it's really good because it's a multi-purpose craft glue. And I will provide a link to that in the description box below as well. But it's a, it's a pretty great glue. I use it um, a couple times. It wasn't so hot. I've noted where it's not been effective. But for the most part, I find it to be a pretty great glue. And I don't get, it doesn't burn my fingers. That's the greatest part about it. So um, I'm going to just wrap it all the way around to the top and into that little crevice where it meets the top of that mop um, head. And just add some more of my new favorite glue and uh, create a nice little nautical top to my lantern. And then for this lantern, I am going to glue the top on. I usually don't do this, but in this case, you'll see why in a few minutes. I just added some of that tight bond glue to the top and just placed the lid right on and let the glue set. And you can see why here, because I intend to add some nautical cord to the top and bottom anyway. So that's going to hold it in place anyway. And um, this just makes it easier to do. And so to do that, all that I'm doing is taking a piece of cord. I'm kind of measuring out how long it's going to be, adding some of the glue to both ends, um, create a nice, you know, kind of stiff end there on the edge. And then I'm going to just loop it around and create a knot, just a regular knot and then pull that tight around my little peg there at the top and then do the same process at the bottom. Just make a little knot and then put that knot around the little tack and pull it through. And then I'm going to repeat that process for all of the tacks all the way around the lantern. Now in order to get rid of a lot of those little fuzzies as well as give some rigidity to the string, I am going to coat it with some of the glue. Just put it on and then just rub it around with my fingers. Yes, it is very messy, uh, but it does give a great look. And then once um, everything is in place, I can just go back and cut the little edges off of the strings. And then here's what it looks like once all of the jute cord has been applied all the way around. Now uh, for the candle insert, I decided to go ahead and do some sand and a candle. And this little item might look familiar to you from Christmas. It occurred to me, I was going through my things, and I'm like, oh my goodness, that looks just like some coral. So I just kind of stuck it in there, cut it, cut it off a little bit in order for it to have a little bit of uh, a better fit to the vase, but it worked out just fine. Now to get candles in and out of this, all you need to do is remove one center piece of the uh, little tack, and they just kind of you know pull in and out because they're tacks, and you have access to the inside of the lantern. And then here's the finished project. I just added a little seashell to the top to give it that extra beach vibe. And um, I don't know, I'm thinking that it would probably look better with just a plain candle. I think it's a little too busy to have all that seashell stuff going on inside the vase, but I don't know. Um, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Should it just be just a plain candle here? I'm thinking so, but let me know what you think. The next DIY is fun and easy, and it uses these wood dowels from the Dollar Tree couple of these little wood crates as well as a couple of these cute little fishies in two different designs there from the Dollar Tree as well as the uh, floral foam also from the Dollar Tree. 
And so all I did with these was that I took the fish and um, one of the dowels, and then I added some of that wood glue, well, that multi-purpose glue, which is also good for wood, and um, then also the hot glue. So I'm using the hot glue again just to hold it in place while the better glue for this, which is the wood glue, sets up. And so it just, you know, prevents me from having to stand there and hold it or put it in, in a way that I could, you know, that the, um, that the wood pieces would stay together with clamps or something like that. Next, I'm going to give the fish a weathered, bleached wood look. And I'm going to do that by just uh, taking some white chalk paint on a dry brush and just lightly brushing that over the natural color of the wood. And this way, I'm just going to let the natural wood kind of uh, shine through, just do the little streaks of the dry brush chalk paint on top. And then again, that just gives that nice weathered, bleached out beach look. And then I'm going to take the little wood crates and I'm going to do the same dry brush uh, process with the white chalk paint. And I'll do that for both of the boxes. And then once the paint is dry, I'll just go ahead and take some of that tight bond glue, or you can use wood glue here. I'm going to just add some of that to the uh, side of the one box and then um, also some hot glue. Again, this is to just get that immediate hold and I'll put those two boxes together. And then that hot glue will keep it in place while the other glue sets up. And then I'm going to just take some of the floral foam that I've cut down to size and just place it in my boxes. And then add some Spanish moss to the top of the uh, foam to cover the foam. And then once that was done, I just added my fish. But before I put the fish in, I uh, took the small ones and I just cut about two inches off of the dowel for the smaller fish. Then I added the larger fish first. And what I wanted to do is just line it up there in the middle of each of the boxes and kind of towards the back. And then I took the one smaller fish and I put it right there in the middle and then one on each side of that. And then I decided to add a little more decoration by adding some of the Dollar Tree nautical rope. And I just took three strips of that and I'm going to just hot glue that to the wood crate. So I'm going to just take some hot glue and put it right there in the middle of that first section of the wood crate and just kind of wrap it around and again add some hot glue to the front right there again in the middle and then just attach that uh, cord right to the hot glue and wrap it around to the back and then I'm going to do that for each one of those sections on the box so that I end up with three of the ropes. And then here is the finished project, a great little school of fish sculpture in a wonderful weathered wood finish. For the last DIY, I'm going to make a fun little palapa style mirror using a Dollar Tree mirror, wreath, and hula hoop skirt. This is the adult one, and also a couple of paint sticks. First, I'm going to just tape off the mirror with some masking tape because I am going to be painting it. And then I'm going to add one of the, now these are the smaller paint sticks, paint stirrer sticks. I'm going to add one vertically. I'm going to add it with first some of that uh, multi-purpose glue and then add some hot glue to hold it in place. And then do the same horizontally with another uh, paint stick. And then again, just adding some glue there to the bottom of the ring as well as the top of the paint stick and then reinforcing with some hot glue. Next, I'm going to take some of that tight bond glue and again, just put some strips there on that horizontal paint stick and also add some hot glue as well. And then just center my mirror right on top. Then I took the entire combination and painted it with some of this satin almond spray paint or alternately, I could have used some of this cashew paint from Waverly. Next, I took the hula skirt and I added some glue to the top and then just pressed the two sides together because I wanted to seal off the top of the skirt. And then once the two sides are glued together, it should look like that. And then uh, what I wanted to do was just cut the skirt in half lengthwise. So I uh, laid it out flat and then just kind of folded it in half to find where that midpoint would be and then just cut the skirt there. Now, since the skirt does end up being a little bit short of what I need it to be up at the top, I did have to go back with some of those cut pieces and add to the length there kind of widthwise 
of the skirt. So what I'm doing is just adding, uh, tying on some of the strands to that end of the rope. And then once my paint was dry, I just went back and removed the masking tape from the mirror and then added some of the tight bond glue there along the inside perimeter of the mirror. And now I just went back with the hula hoop skirt and attached it to the inside rim of the mirror. And then there you can see where that little extra bit was needed in order to get all the way around the inside rim. Once the glue was set, I flipped the skirt back up so that I could add some more glue to the wreath form underneath. And then I took the cuttings from when I had cut the skirt in half and attached those to the glue on the wreath form. This served to fill in the spaces and make the mirror surround nice and full. Once I had those attached, I went back with some more glue on top of the cuttings and then just flipped the top of the skirt back in place, attaching it to the glue to hold it down. And then I just continued on to the next section, filling in again underneath and then flipping it back over and attaching it in place. And then once all the sections were complete, I just went back and cut off the excess. And what I did was I took about one and a half inches from that bottom rung of the wreath form and just cut from there all the way around the wreath. And then here's the finished project, a great decorative mirror for any beach or boho decor. For the last set of projects, I have some quick and easy nautical Dollar Tree DIYs and crafts previously published on June 24th, 2020. Okay, so for the first set of DIYs, I'm going to be mixing and matching various different Dollar Tree items. So over here in this corner, you can see a variety of different ceramic figurines that uh, Dollar Tree typically sells. They'll sell them in all different times of the year with different themes. And so um, those will be kind of the main piece of it. And then next to those, you see a variety of different votive candles, and these are sold in the candle section. Um, I'm also going to be using the little clear votive candle holders, as well as this one is actually from Walmart. It's both a votive and a taper candle holder. And then some Dollar Tree vases there to the back as well as some Dollar Tree sand and um, also we'll pan up a little bit here to see some Dollar Tree seashells. Then in addition to that I will also be using the applique there on that wall hanging so the little seahorse and then also some of that twine now that is actually from Joann's that's not from the Dollar Tree uh, but you can see here on the little sign it has the little seahorse applique and then I'll just be taking that off to use that for these projects but then I'll use the sign later on in the video. So I guess these really aren't DIYs as much as they are decor hacks um, because all you're going to be doing with these is taking a couple of different items and just gluing them together. So I'm going to take this little ceramic piece and then glue it to the bottom of this upside down votive. I can do the same here with this vase, just gluing it to the top of the vase to make a much more substantial decor piece. And so here we see the teal vase with a coral ceramic topper. And then here is a clear vase with the seashells and now a conch shell topper. And then here's that conch shell again on a teal votive. And then the conch shell on another votive that has a frosted glass. And then there's the coral again on a teal shaded frosted glass. And then there it is on the just hourglass shape votive in a frosted again. And again, you don't have to do this in a nautical theme. You can mix and match other little ceramic figurines that they have and the themes that you like. And I just wanted to show you this here as well. This is using another one of those ceramic figurines, this time with a seashell. These are from a previous DIY and I will link those as well, but I wanted to show you that with just another combination of these little ceramic figurines and other Dollar Tree items, you can make some nice bookends. And now let's take a look at putting those votive holders on top of the vases and what kind of candlesticks we can make with those. So this votive holder from the Dollar Tree will hold a votive and then this one from Walmart will hold both a votive and a taper candle. That's also only a dollar. The Dollar Tree ones though do come three or four to a pack um, for those but the Walmart one will hold the taper candle as well and it's uh, a heavier uh, votive so it is a really nice piece. And then all you need to do is take the votive of your choice and 
put some E6000 on and glue it to the top of the vase. Another option would be to take a clear vase and fill it with some Dollar Tree seashells and then again E6000, the votive of your choice, on top. As an added decoration, you can take some jute cord and just glue it on there where the votive meets the vase. And then here we see the various combinations. Here's the teal vase with the votive on top. And then there it is with the taper candle holder at the top. And now here is the taper with the seashells and then the votive with the seashells. And finally, the votive with the seashells and the jute cord accent. And that is one of the great pluses to DIYing because you can create things that meet your needs, your style, and your likes. And then for some added decoration to your vase and or candlestick, you could use these wonderful appliques from this Dollar Tree wall hanging. These seahorses are in that perfect teal color that matches that vase just perfectly. And maybe you could just go along and paint the back and the sides with a nice teal color just to finish it off. In order to remove the sheen and also give it maybe a little texture on the front, you can go ahead and paint it with some matte Mod Podge and this way it will just give it a more finished look. And then you can go ahead and add your candle holder of choice or you could just leave it a vase if you like. But I do want to point out if you are going to make candlesticks and you want it to have a matched set, just notice that the seahorses will go in the same direction if you do that. So um, first let me show you how I get the seahorses off and um, I just take a little screwdriver and usually to kind of poke around to find where there's always like a little space where you can kind of get started and then I just kind of start with that space and then just kind of slowly you don't want to really yank it or pull it too hard because it, it will probably break or bend so if you just keep going along patiently it will come off. And then here that I have the two of them off, I do want to show you how, see how they both go in the same direction, which is not typical when you have candlesticks. They're usually either facing each other or, you know, apart from each other, something in this fashion. So if you wanted to do something like this, you're going to have to paint the um, seahorses. And so what I did first is to remove any of that uh, extra paper or glue on the back. And then I'm going to paint them both sides with some white paint. And then I'm going to go and add a coat of glue and just kind of paint that on, make sure that that gets nice and even. And then I'm going to just top that with some white Dollar Tree sand. And just make sure it is smoothed out and pat it down. And then I can just glue that to the front of my base. And then here is the finished project. This is the sand covered one. And then here on this side is the original seahorse with the teal and turquoise shading. I kind of like them both, but I think I'm leaning more towards the one with the original colors. Not sure though, so leave me a comment below and let me know which one you like better. For the next DIY, I'm going to go ahead and make use out of one of those signs. Now I'm going to actually be using the back of this sign, so I could either sand it down and paint it or just paint it. Actually, I'm going to just leave it alone because it's going to be uh, back to the wall. Uh, but then also I'm going to be using these little shims. Now shims are from construction actually. They're used to uh, make sure that the studs are lined up the way you need them. You kind of stick them in in between. And um, you can get these at Lowe's 42 for $4.98. That makes them about 12 cents each. And they're just nice because they have a nice rugged um, exterior, this particular one. Other ones are smoother, but this one that I uh, showed you there and that I'll link in the description is a cedar one and it has a nice rough uh, surface, which makes it great for these rustic type of projects. And so all that I'm doing here is taking some French teal paint, which I will also link in the description box below, and I'm just dry brushing it. And I'm going to be making like a slat sign. So I want it to appear like it has been weathered. So when I'm applying the dry brush of this teal, I'm applying it right to the middle of the slat with less paint toward the edges. And then you can see what a nice effect that has once you have all of your slats lined up together. And what I want to do with these is make a fresh crabs sign. This is something I would see all the time as a kid uh, growing up and down in Cape May. And so I'm using this mobile from the Dollar Tree and it's a little crab mobile. And then I'm going to just take some Dollar Tree spackle and fill in the holes. And I applied the spackle to the back so this way that the front would have a smoother surface. 
Next, I'm going to start applying the slats to the board with some glue. And I just want to point out here that shims are in this kind of wedge fashion. So it has like a thicker end and a thinner end. And so what I want to do is I'm going to alternate the thick and the thin ends. This way, it also will give me that kind of rustic, um, you know, kind of worn board that's kind of coming off of its uh, background and so it really does help with the rustic effect and then i can just kind of move everything around um, when using the kind of wood glue that's a multi-purpose glue that type bond but it's great for wood and it does give you some more setup time so you can kind of shift it around and, and get it to the spacing that you want and so that's a really good glue to use in this application and then once i have everything where i want it i'm going to go ahead and give my Krabby a little bit of a whitewash with some white chalk paint on a dry brush. And then I'm gonna take these Dollar Tree stickers and I'm going to just spell out the words fresh crabs. Now I will need to glue down these stickers, but at this stage, I just kind of want to put them on uh, with the adhesive of the, of the sticker and then I can just rearrange them and make them the way I kind of want them to go. Not really even, just kind of haphazard and then I'll just go back and glue them on. But then I wasn't really loving that black print on the sticker so I decided to go back and trace over the black print with the teal paint. Now um, you can use one of these really thin brushes and they work quite well. I also wanted to do the outline of the crab also with the blue teal paint. But if you don't have one of those little brushes, I find that you can just kind of make your own paint marker by using a pencil and just loading it like a quill, you know, pretend like you're Ben Franklin or something and just start, you know, dipping your uh, writing instrument there in some ink, which happens to be teal paint. And um, it works out quite well, actually. You don't want to dab it off if it's too gloppy because you don't want to have big glops where you are trying to, um, you know, use the pencil. But um, if you kind of keep it to a nice thin stream, it works almost like a paint marker. Of course, it's great in this application because, you know, you're going for that rustic look and it's, you know, it looks fine if it's kind of, you know, haphazard and a little bit, you know, fuzzy. Um, if you were looking for something more refined, it's not going to be a good application of this. But for this application, it's great because it just adds to that rustic weathered effect. And then once I was finished with all of my outlining and all of the paint was dry, I did go back with some Mod Podge to just seal down the stickers and make sure everything stayed nice and in place. And then once my top coat of Mod Podge was dry, I went back again with some white chalk paint again on a dry brush. And what I'm doing is applying it over the lettering as well as the crab and also some to the sign as well. Just adding a little more weathering and a little dimension as well. And I'll just keep going little by little until I get the final look that I'm going for. And here's the finished project in a nautical motif. But of course you can use these materials and techniques to achieve that rustic look in multiple different styles. Next I have another quick and easy Dollar Tree DIY, again using a Dollar Tree sign, this time with an adorable sea turtle, and all I'm going to be doing is adding some things to it. It's an already adorable sign. So what I'm going to do here though is just add some of the Dollar Tree mosaic glass beads to the back of the sea turtle with um, just adding some glue. So I'm going to just add some more of this type on glue and then I'm going to just uh, paint it out to make a nice thin uh, even cover on the back of the turtle shell. And then I'll just begin adding the little mosaic glass beads and I want to try to get the different colors kind of spread out evenly so that they're you know kind of different the blue and the green and the clear are uh, all over the turtle's back and then once everything is applied I can kind of reshape it make sure everything is fitting nicely and then I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree white nautical cord and just cut off that end that it comes uh, wrapped and then just begin to add that nautical cord to my sign to the outside of my sign and just glue it down and seal it there on the end. And that's it, a cute little upcycled Dollar Tree sign created simply by putting various different Dollar Tree items all together. Lastly, I have this fun little DIY that is also quick and easy. It uses this noodle booster from the Dollar Tree 
as well as a wood box, a wood dowel, and some floral foam, also all from the Dollar Tree. So first I'm just gonna take my noodle booster and I'm going to get a serrated knife and just cut about a one and a half inch slice of the noodle booster. So I just kind of keep cutting around, sawing through, just kind of making certain I'm getting it evenly. So I'm going nice and slow and just kind of uh, twisting the noodle as I cut. And then I'm gonna just set that aside. And then I'm gonna take some craft paint in the color nutmeg, as well as a few drops of water. And I'm gonna mix the two together to thin out the paint and create a nice stain for my wood. Then I'll just take a paper towel, dip it into my stain and proceed to just stain the box and the dowel and I did go back and do a second coat of the stain on the box because it was a little thin, but it came up real nice after I did two coats. Then I just added some floral foam to the little drawer of the box and then took my dowel and inserted it into my slice of pool noodle and then just placed it into the foam in the box. Next to cover the hole, I took some jute cord and just hot glued a little strip around the bottom and that just covered the hole and made a nice little accent to finish off my ruffled coral sea sculpture. And then here is the finished project, a beautiful teal colored ruffled coral like sculpture. But you can see how you can use these to create all types of different shapes like flowers, gears, frames, etc. Well, I hope you have enjoyed these quick and easy Dollar Tree DIYs and crafts in a nautical theme, which of course can be made in other themes as well. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give a thumbs up and please share with any family and friends you think would also enjoy this video. If you have a favorite or plan on making any of these, please let me know in the comments below. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you join the family. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Fab Tax, where we're putting the extra in ordinary one DIY at a time.